Ready? Yep. We'd like to call the meeting for the Ashland County Forestry Department committee meeting. We'll take roll call. Rich Huber. Here. John Wiener. Here. Gary Murtick. Here. Kathy Schutte here. Marty Vitek. Here. Oh, he's online. Good. Thank Hello. you, Marty. Hello there. Good. How are the roll? Did you see the roll yet? I didn't hear that. Did you see the roads yet? Have you been driving yet? I didn't. I I don't even look at them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Number two on the agenda is to approve the uh, agenda. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Please present it. So Rick is presenting or motioning, and we need a second. I'll second. John Wiener seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Public comments, we have three minutes for each person. I have a, a report from Mary McFetridge and I'll read it into the minutes. Good morning to our Ashland County. Here's our Ashland County report of what we'd like to report on. We are finalizing the visitor guide and finishing up with sales and content. We are looking in front for a cover for either the Copper Falls State Park or Morgan Falls, St. Peter's Dome or Lake Superior. We have a couple options. However, if someone has a high resolution picture they would like us to consider, please email it to info at vistaashland.com. Well, now it's snow season and I'm sure Bill Chandler will give you an update on the snowmobile trails. However, we are getting many requests for snowmobiling and we are running ads for snowmobiling opportunities in Ashland County, in Minnesota snowmobile news and Wisconsin snowmobile news and also the digital on the Lake Link and snow tracks. We are aggressively marketing winter Copper Falls State Park, Morgan Falls are open year round, including a self-guided mural tour. Lastly, we have ice fishing commercials out on TV, Kurt Wallenbeck, Outdoor Bound on the Outdoor Network channels, just played our Ashland County fishing show the weekend of Christmas. We taped one on Schwamigan Bay and the other one on Inlet Lakes in Ashland County. Next month, I would like to attend the meeting and talk about how we spend our budget. If you have any questions, please feel to call me or contact me. Sincerely, Mary McFetridge. So that's her report. She also had another meeting at 8.30 and she can't do two at the same time. Any other public comments? All right, we'll go on to the next item. The next one is the approval of the forest and recreation minutes. I would like not to have to approve these because I was not here for the full meeting. So I'm looking for the rest of the committee to do that. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Gary to approve the minutes as presented. I'll, I'll second it. Rich Huber seconds it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. passes. Next, we'll go to number five, the WDNR reports. First one is fishery. Um, I don't, yeah, Zach, Zach's not on the, the meeting, so. Yep. Next one is wildlife with Jenna Malinowski. Yeah, she's on here. Hi there. <clears throat> um, not much in the way of updates other than we are continuing to complete wolf tracking surveys, otter tracking surveys. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically it for this winter. We still have to finish up a few openings, uh, wildlife openings on county forests, which will be um, after the snowstorm probably be shut down. Um, but if we do get better conditions, they will be uh, forestry mode in the next coming months, if not the spring. <clears throat> Good deal, thanks for that information. We have a question for you from John. What is all about the otter tracking system? Sure, our otter tracking survey has changed. So we used to do aerial flights um, and go up in planes and look for different 
slides and tracks along waterways. And this year, um, it's the first, we did a pilot survey last year and this year we're actually completing a volunteer and DNR survey where we're looking at track tracks along uh, bridge bridges, 400 meters in one direction, 400 meters in the other direction. Does that have a concern on your traffic system or anything? I'm sorry, what was that? Do they have any effect on your trapping systems? Trapping? Yeah. Oh no, this is tracking. Oh, track. Yeah, tracking, track surveys. Thank you. Any other questions for Jenna? Then we'll move on to forestry for Avery Jenke. Hey everyone, uh, Avery Jenke with forestry and Mellon here. Uh, December was a pretty quiet month uh, as far as county forest work goes. Uh, we did finish one large timber sale that we had been working on uh, since like June. So that was nice to kind of finish up that one. Um, we had a um, couple weeks with, uh, you know, people taking time off and things like that. So that kind of ate into our county forest work. Um, we, our staff attended one training uh, on hardwood uh, lumber merchandising. So uh, that's pretty relevant to the Ashland County Forest. We were looking at hardwood logs uh, standing on the stump and then we cut into them and uh, discussed how, um, you know, defects in the log will degrade the value of the lumber. <clears throat> so just wanted to kind of point that out that we're always looking to um, stay up to date with the latest trainings. Uh, as it relates to the county forest. Um, and lastly, we are looking ahead to the next year. I'll be meeting with uh, Matt and Jerome and um, we do this every year where we kind of plan our work and decide, you know, who, which foresters are going to look at which stands on the county forest. And uh, we'll be looking at maps and things like that, getting a plan together. Um, and another big thing we'll be doing is uh, calculating the time standard. So um, I've mentioned this before, but basically DNR forestry has a set amount of hours each year that we provide to the county forest. Lately, it's been around 900 hours, but we're going to recalculate that number um, for the next five-year period. So that'll be looking out to 2027. Um, so it'll be the same number for all those five years. Um, and that is it for county forest business from DNR. All right, Avery, I want to say thank you for doing that report. Even though it might have been a quiet month, it tells us that you're still working on stuff. So when you people are giving reports, we appreciate it, even if it's not a big full blown report, that we keep track of what you're doing and we're glad. And thank you for that. No problem. Happy to do that. Thank you. Next, we'll go to number six, and it's the snowmobile and ATV report by Bill Chandler. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. My report is the GPS units were installed in all five groomers. Appear to be working at this time. The gates were opened by 12, 15, 21, except for the Schwamga Nicolay, which we need their approval when to open. This is based on the Bayfield and Sawyer County match us at the same time. These gates were opened as the groomers went through the pack. More signs will be replaced where needed. The problem that we had on Trail 9 has been fixed by our operator. He ended up going in two times. The first time was a little wet. Second time was after the froze, so it was pretty good. He has gone in with the groomer and packed it, and it's about two foot on each side of the blade, so the drag has got enough room to get down to the bottom of the trail. That was the problem last year. The drill, the drag would ride up on top of it, and there would be three foot between the top and the bottom. 
They probably on trail 13 on the pipeline where the culvert was put in. The groomers has crossed it two or three times now and seems to be okay. Some water. If you guys have been out riding snowmobiles, uh, but they ride in single file, so that doesn't do a whole lot up for us. There, what we would love to do is go down that area, that water area there, and try to find a narrower place to cross and get a measurement of it. And uh, it's okay with the county to get a bridge put in and then cut a new trail back up to Long Lake. The 40-foot rule, which the AWSC has been working on for the last two or three years, it was on uh was been signed by the governor on December the fourth. The trails that have been running along side of the uh, road that have not been uh legal, you can now run both sides of the road as long as it's uh approved snowmobile trail and signed. And that the snowmobilers have to have a dimmer and meet uh, town requirements to, to do that. We do not have all the particulars at this time, but uh, they will. It'll be coming down so that we can pass it to uh, the uh, county uh, uh, law enforcement. Pat sent a notice to the clubs members that they go out and finish their signing and do, but be careful because there is a four day deer hunt going on at this time and there's deer hunt going on at this time and have respect for the landowners. Very little packing has been done. We did send some groomers out on 12, 30, 21 to start packing with the groomers. However, there are areas of danger with water because very little packing has been done. We, I brought an operator from Clam Lake over, our groomer operator from Clam Lake over to do some packing so that we could run the groomers through. And the groomer has gone through and no problem with that. 12, 30, 21. Trails were opened with travel at your own risk. And some packing could be done, but warning people to be aware of the open water, rocks, and other debris that's on the trail that is under the edge and uh, under the snow. The items that I reported last month that needed to be done yet are finished. Wash out on the Schultz property has been taken care of the landowner, Tom Kreskovich. And that was a donation to the Alliance. And a wash out on uh, White River Hill by the dam on 112 was also done by landowner, Brian Anderson. That was a donation to the Alliance. As we go around checking the trails, we still do hand brushing and sign replacement. The operators have done a lot of tree removal when trying to pack trails. Had the clubs gone out to pack, they would have been able to remove these trees. Where snowmobilers have packed, it is, again, only one sled wide, and that would just cover the center of the groomer, not the tracks. We had one groomer operator out 14 hours cutting trees so he could get through. That was on Trail 9. We have received a letter from a landowner to use her property this year. That's the gate on uh, Long Lake Road. It needs to be uh, requested annually. She would not sign an easement, but she wrote a letter. We gave the letter to Matt to put in with the easements. 
We'll be discussing this at another time with Matt as well. Another landowner which has claimed a portion of the township road on East Town Line Road uh, claims that he needs an easement from us and we have not given him an easement because we've been using that trail for 30 years working with the township of White River and with Marengo. And the chairperson of Marengo says that they will take care of that for us. So we're waiting on that yet. And Bruce was working on that as well. Maps are being printed. They'll be distributed as soon as received. There's not enough snow to send a groomer out with a drag because if we do, there wouldn't be anything left. Where the groomer has went with this to, just to open the trails, we've got grass and rocks and everything else sticking through. And we need another eight to 10 inches of snow, of good snow that would pack. And that's all I have at this time. Any questions for Bill? John Wiener has a question. Is a trail open at all from Butternut to Glen? What about it? That yesterday you finally made a pass. Is a trail open from Butternut to Glen? I see it looks like you finally made a pass. Um, is that capable for snowmobiles to go through double wide now? I, know, I see you had some tree problems and stuff like that. Is that taken care of? I didn't understand that. Are the tree, is the trails open from Butternut to Glen um, all capable of uh, going double wide with the snowmobiles for safety precautions now? I see you finally went through yesterday. Why um, they could have been dragged up earlier so they might be frozen. To um, I feel it's a little bit late for doing some things. Yes, the trail has been packed there now, and we was going out this morning to do the 12 trail 12, but the wind was a little too strong because there's a bunch of trees down in there. And we don't want the operator to get a tree cut and have it blow back on him because they're hanging trees across the trail. So he came back and is going to go out on trail 11 here in Mellon area and 13. And we're trying to train new operators, but uh, you can only train them to open. You can't train them on the groomer till we get enough snow to do that with. Um, I guess um, I just had a couple of a lot of complaints that uh, things ain't quite up to date. Like we had some cold weather and we got snow earlier. Um, I just wondered why they weren't out earlier. Like you said that the rumor be any complaints are coming in right now are maybe just, that they're they're just uh. They're not doing anything to help the program. They're not doing anything to help the program. They're just hindering it. For the simple reason is, we've got to have enough snow to be able to do something with. They dragged right now. They went. They went from previously from about ten thousand to they're, they're now in the neighborhood of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. And if you run a drag across all of these rocks and stuff, then you don't have anything that you can groom the trail with later on. So oh, it's uh, in our determination that, that we need enough snow that we can groom the snow and not rocks and dirt. When you run through the first time, do you just run through with a drag, don't you? What's that? When you go through the first time on any trails to get them down to where they can freeze and then capable of grooming, um, wasn't there enough snow to do that? No. You can look at the crossings. Now, Price County did, 
and theirs is right down to the grass. They have nothing left to ride on. And Mayfield County came in on Trail 90 to, to our trail up in God's Country, and theirs, for the 400 feet down the trail, 400 yards down the trail, all you see is dirt and rock sticking through, no snow. And in our area up in Ashland, where we run and went across Highway 13 by Airport Inn, if you look at that, all you see there is grass, and that was only done with the groomer. It wasn't done with the drag. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Bill. We'll move on to number seven, the Recreation Officer, Bruce Jonas. Yes, sir. Just, just comment back on this last thing that they noticed. You know, people complain that I think the clubs have to take some responsibility as well because the clubs need to pack down these trails when when they need to, because otherwise the tucker is not going to be able to get through there by itself. It weighs too much. The wet areas, everybody knows where they're at. All these clubs have been around, they understand all this. But there seems to be some type of misconnect or something like that between the clubs and the alliance. And that's been going on forever. But the complaints I'm hearing, I don't, they don't all fall back on the alliance. And they all don't fall back on the clubs, but they gotta work together. The clubs are complaining that they don't wanna take their $15,000 set out there, cash trail, and in the same token, why do we want to, you know, what does the Tucker cost now? $150,000? I mean, it makes no sense to me. So I don't understand where some of these questions come up where the complaints are still coming up. I've been doing this for about what, two and a half years now, and I hear the same thing over and over and over again. They got to work together. And it is some of the club's responsibility to go out there pack trail. And they all know how to do it. But the last two years that I've seen, and I'm not an avid snowmobiler. I didn't ride snowmobile before I came to this. When I went out and rode, I believe Ashton County trails last year were as good as they could be. And the surrounding ones that went out and, and uh, groomed right away and lost some of their trail, people were coming over here saying the trails are better over here. And it was because they waited, because of the weather conditions that we had dictated when they're going to set out the tucker and when they're going to set out, you know, the, the whole grooming operation. So, you know, I I also believe that you know some of the trails should have been should have been um, brushed better. But in the same token, it also goes back to the to the clubs. The clubs got to help with the packing, and you know now especially with the wind windstorms that we've had, how many trees have been knocked down? Now it sounds like there was even more at, with this storm. You know, with the weight of the snow and then all the wind that we had. So, you know, it's always a, it's always a working process, but the club's got to help too. And I'm not saying that they're not helping, but to the degree of their assistance and, you know, better communication. I just get where I've been listening for about four years ago, I've been with uh, Jacob, <coughs> and I just get so many complaints, and I just come, some came to my door yesterday, but, you know, I get tired, I get tired from here to go back. So I agree, I agree with you, but are they, they, are they 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 about five times already, so we, I really have a hard time believing that it's not the snow. I've been followed up five times now. It's so, no offense, but the snow is all fluff. There's nothing to it. You can't even pack this. If you take a snowmobile down the trail right now, I'll, I'll show you trails for a year in butter or grass. It, this snow does not pack. So it's who's ever complaining might not go out to work at you. And it's still, when you look at it, it's still for snow. Mm -hmm. You know, this this isn't a lot of snow for snowmobile. So the people that ride, you know, they know all this already. I mean, if they've ridden for any length of time, they know that it's going to take more snow than we've gotten this year to actually get the trails up to where, you know, we all want them to be. We just need more snow. Well, that's out of control of everybody. Mother Nature isn't fairly working with us. But but to say to go out there and it's it's all the alliance fault that we should be out there dragging because Iron County is or because Price County is or Bayfield County is when you look at the amount of snow that each place got, you know, they got a lot more. I mean, I I, I, I live in Marengo. When you go look at all the farmer fields that we have to drive through, as of before the snow, you can still see the dirt. So you're not going to be able to ride over that. You're not going to be able to, to definitely even. Well, you can drive the tucker over it, but what are you doing? You're not doing anything. 
You can't bring the, the uh, drain with it. I feel like it's a really difficult situation, but I guess everybody can just be listening to that. Well, maybe, Bill, do you, do you call these small these small clubs in town to go and take their snowmills and help with the trails, or who calls them to, to notify them that you need help for packing trails on? I know that he does. Does he? Yes. Okay, you're also president does. The association does, yes. They've been talking with the clubs, whether through email or phone calls. Oh. So I just, well then, yeah, it's-, it's An just email time. was sent to the clubs from Pat Dulles, president of the Alliance. Oh, okay. And then that's what they- uh, And here comes a letter that the committee can look at and review it. That's the email. The email. Oh, okay. So. And well, Rich is kind of reading over it. Um, maybe this will kind of help a little bit. This morning in Marengo, where I live, we got eight inches of snow already. So when we came down to Butternut, you don't have eight inches of snow. You probably got two. And so there's the amount of snow is different in just a 10 mile block. So I think that's part of this issue too, is some people get lots of snow and they're waiting for the groomer. And then some people don't get enough to have the groomer come through. There isn't enough, so. And the weather was, we had a really warm fall that we didn't get snow until late. We were thinking we'd have a brown Christmas because we didn't get the snow this year like we've had some years, like in October. So I think the amount of snow in different areas is making it, Confusing for some people also. And just the rest of the report, uh, deer season, uh, I got like nine, nine or so uh, uh, firearms that were loaded in vehicles and UTVs. Um, basically status quo with, you know, the ATV was, it's, it's going fairly well until, you know, even even deer season, I think there was there was less less ATV traffic that I saw in the woods um, than you know I've seen in the past. Uh, the snowmobile season, I think, is going to be good once we can you know get the snow that we need. Um, you know, people are starting to ride a little bit. Um, I don't think we had any. There's been there are no fatalities or. I don't know if we had any reportable crashes since the last time I reported, so that's all I have. I see where Bill mentioned that if the trails ain't open alongside the road, that you can use the roads around them? Um, what that law pertained to was um, at night when you had the, um, the trail going alongside the road, it had to be 40 foot off the road, roadway. Um, and that allowed for, you know, traffic, you know, snowmobile traffic going each direction at night because of low beam, you know, lights and high beams. Now it's been rescinded that as long as it's a, it's a, uh, a marked trail, um, it's, it, you can go down, you follow with traffic. And then when you're coming, you can use it coming back, but you have to dim your lights. So before, if the correct trail would be, it would have to be 10 foot off. If it went with this direction of the with uh, along with the road, but if it wasn't going with the direction of the road, the trail had to be forty foot away, so that the bright lights would be less as intense or not as intense for the oncoming traffic. And now uh, snowmobiles, believe it or not, they didn't have this on the books that if you meet another snowmobile or motorized vehicle, you have to dim your lights within five hundred feet. So it's trying to be more uh, like vehicle. You know, when you're operating a vehicle, you have the laws. They're trying to you know. Get those as close to possible because when you think about it, ATVs and snowmobiles weren't intended to be on the roadway like they are now. So now that you know the legislation is finally trying to catch up to hey, if we're having these vehicles on the roadways, they should be following more of the the, the road the roadway uh, laws. But you don't have the same laws as you do with snowmobiles and ATV as you do with vehicles that operate on the roadway. They're catching up, but. It's not identical yet. That's just on calling trunks and stuff, though, right? 
or state highways because state highways same way then. everything well everything is because right now like if in the in the in the uh well, I can use over by Clam Lake on where it's 55 from 195 into town. You know, they can they can use that state highway. In here, they if Butternut allowed it because they're under 35 miles an hour, yeah. The village of Butternut could have where you could run the, the ATV snowmobiles, you can't. Snowmobiles have to be on the road. Okay, that's what I meant with snowmobiles one side the highway, state highway. That is a that so, isn't legal, is they, it? Yeah, it is. It they, is? Have, they have to be 10 foot off the roadway. Okay. I just want I just, it's kind of dangerous, like you said, with those lights at night. But. Right. But now they're saying that they got it done. Okay. So I got I got another question for you. Uh, had several complaints about uh, uh, ATVs on mining company. You're kicking them off the mining company land? I'm not kicking them off anything. Well, that's what they said. The, <laughs> law, the law is when, um, you have a, a personal property in the forest tax law, which is which either is I think it's F, F or MFL. MF, FCL? Yeah, FCL or MFL property. You can have, you're not have any motorized vehicles on there um, unless you have what well, everything is under written permission. So it's just like trespassing on your property. Okay. If you give me permission to use your property however I want to, then I have permission to do so. With this taxation, because they get the break. You know, MFL allows you to hunt, fish, um, but it's not the same as if it was your property. So technically you can't have any um, blinds. The only um, uh, shacks that you can have, you know, on the property are with, like if you built them from dead vegetation. So you can't cut any trees, you can't cut shooting lanes. You cannot have a uh, uh, trail camera. There's, there's laws and rules that go along with it. And um, that was one of the complaints I was getting. But every time I talk to those same people that you're talking about, I'm like, okay, so this is your property. And I come and do this. Are you going to let me do it? I said it's trespassing, plain and simple. I don't care if a mining company owns it or a private person owns it. They're getting these tax breaks for allowing people to do it. But, you know, the problem we're having and the reason that this all started was because of timber theft. There's a lot of timber theft that goes on on those properties because nobody thinks anybody's in there. Okay, because I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of bad because now you've got people like third and fourth and fifth generation that hunted in a certain place, like on GG 77 and stuff. And now they can't get to there. To sure they can. Them. Sure they can. If they walk. Right. Or contact the, the, the person that owns the property. They might be able to get uh, permission to use it. But in the same token, if they were doing it right and doing it by law, the, the mentality of what you're talking about, the area that you're talking about, yeah. is the fact that it's owned by the mining company and who cares? I can go do this. They're making trails all over in the woods out there. If it was your property and you didn't get permission to do it, you'd be very upset. Yeah, but the mining company didn't say nothing about they can't they can't use their trail their logging trails. The mining company never said no, we can't they, go in here. They don't they don't have to. It's just like you don't have to post your property for trespassing. You don't have to post it as private property. Okay. It's the same thing. It's a it's private property. Did you receive a complaint when this all started? Yes, a year and a half or two years. Ago. Yeah, I know because it started what in the summer I think because that's when I started getting complaints. But I can see where. I know where this comes from because I know a couple of people that have used right. it by cutting, yep. you know, trees and everything else. But I mean, that's only maybe one or two percent of the people that do that. The other people aren't, they don't do that. They go in there for hunting. They don't cut no trails or they don't, you know, drive their four-wheelers through the I woods. Can, I can tell you, everybody that... They just use a logging trail. Everybody that I came across that had a shack or a tent, cut trail, everyone well, that, I talked to quite a few of them. They said they didn't do that much. But, and maybe uh, I didn't find her yet either. Yeah. So, but, I mean, you know, it's kind of bad that the other 90% of people have to suffer because 2% of them messed it up for The 90% you're talking about are not doing it legally. Well, if they, if they yeah, if it's illegal to drive your phone right through there, yeah, it isn't. But I don't see why, what the big deal is of driving your formula on a logging room. 
I mean, you know, it's like they can throw in a log, they can bring a cat through there. Yeah. After, after it's their property, they can do what they want with it. It's just like if I came onto your property and did the same thing we're talking about, would you want me doing that? If I understand the situation, the, the, the owner contacted you, the mining company contacted you with a complaint? I had complaints of timber theft. I followed up on those complaints. I found out where the timber theft was taking place. It happened to be on forest crop land that was owned by a mining company. I contacted the mining company because in order for me to proceed with a theft case, yeah, I, I have to have a complaint. <laughs> so I called them and I spoke to them about what was happening. And they said, we have given nobody permission to operate, uh, operate motor vehicles on there. We've given nobody permission to cut timber except for and it just happened to be that case, Peter Peters out of uh, out of Mellon. Yeah, he they said that he does probably, if not all of their uh, timber. Yeah. And he says he can give permission. They had no problem with him giving permission um, on logging sites. But he said that, as far as his knowledge was, he never gave anybody permission to do any of that. And then I think I believe I called Peters on that case, and he had given nobody permission to be on that on that site. Okay. Um, and then from there, I found other things. And when I found the other things, I just called them and said, are, are you going, are you giving anybody permission to do anything outside of what the law for the forest crop, because that's what, or uh, managed forest land is, it's under, that it falls under. So you're giving anybody a uh, permission to do this. And they came back and for that, that particular company, they said no, but that person manages like two or three other places, and he says they haven't given any. And then he manages two or three other ones, but he said he would have to contact those companies to find out if they gave permission. And because my complaints didn't come on those other two or three, I didn't care if they gave permission because I didn't have any ongoing complaints with what was happening on their property. They have asked me and thanked me for um, finding the violations that I've been finding. And they said that they have not given anybody permission to be on that property outside of what the managed forest land uh, tax law allows to happen. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you're doing a good job. I'm not saying anything about that. But so, what they can call? Is there a number you can call? I mean, well, I'm sure. Yeah, they they have to find out who the the company is that owns it. And as long as they get, you know, I would have. They can do verbal. But I would rather have a piece of paper in my pocket if I'm on that property. Yes. And it gives me permission to do whatever I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. And the people I've contacted, they said, call them. I don't know if they're going to give you permission or not. Oh, yeah. I just want to know. Like, yeah. if there's and I've told them. I told them. I said, all you need to do is get permission. It's just like if you were on my property, you came up to me and asked me to do this. And if I gave you permission to do it, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that answers my questions. Because like I said, I had a lot of complaints. Like, you know, like. 74-year-old 70, 70, person that can't go, you would never be able to go on again because you can't walk that far. So, I mean, you know, that's pretty bad. So. I don't like the way that you're saying, because that's the same complaint I get out there on the street. I, I, I disagree with, with the thought process that because it's just mining company property, it's okay to, to you know violate the law because I can't do this on my own property I mean, that's where we're going with this. I, I, I don't understand that statement from you. There are a bunch of other places, private property, and what you just said, though, is incorrect because he can walk on that property and hunt. Yeah, but he can't drive there with ATV anymore. I, I mean, he never I, could. Yeah. That's, that's the whole misconception here. That's what we're missing, is that because they've been doing it for 30 years doesn't make it legal. Oh, no, no, I don't. No, no, I don't. I, I thought I, I talked to Iron County and Iron County says yes, it's illegal to drive your trailer yeah. in you know like that mining company land, but they don't. Yeah. I asked if they have any if they you know they kick anybody off. Well, we, we don't. Want, they they wouldn't yeah. say they wouldn't give me a straight answer saying that yeah they enforce it or no they don't. They just said it's illegal to drive your trailer or, or ATVs. That's all they said. So they must not yeah. uh, you know go people that. Use the, the land, they must not actually go go do that. To, you know, they must just, if they see something, they might do it. Otherwise, they don't go in there and actively go in the land and look and stuff. And from what from what I'm calling the uh, forestry says. So. 
Well, I mean, it's, 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 if that's a law, that's all I want to know. If, there, if there's a number they can call, that, that, that's... They, it's just like any landowner. They'd have to find out who the landowner is, okay. contact that landowner, and then go from there. And then if you do go in there, then they have to have the permission slip with them? It'd make it a lot easier, yes. Okay, okay, I, okay that's, that's why I'm It's just like carrying your driver's license. I mean, yeah. when you're doing something that um, is illegal, unless you have permission, I know I personally would carry that permission slip that says, no, nope, I contacted the company, here's who I contacted. They gave me permission to do this, 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 and this. Okay, that, that's good. You asked my question, so. I just have one quick question and maybe somebody here can answer it. I don't know who that is, but when you're talking about this MLS, where do you, what part of the state rules gives you the rules, what you can and cannot do? Go onto the DNR web, Wisconsin DNR website. And if you just type in MFL or FCL, it'll bring you to a, a whole bunch of information. There's okay. pamphlets you can, there's like a, there's a, a PDF file that you can download and it's two pages. It explains, very well what that what the that taxation law is because somebody just asked me last week they want to go hunting up here on mfl land yeah. up in marengo and they want to know where it is and stuff so if i could actually, get them to actually if you look on the dnr website every parcel that's in the forest crop or the old forest crop right. manage is listed it's checked by yeah. and it might be on that uh, you know another link on that same page because it it brings up a, a map of wisconsin and it shows you where those what's, what's outlined. Where, and then they let you know that because there is a difference between MFL and FCL, what you can do. Um, so okay. you know you need to look at both if you're going to be on that that property. All right, good deal. Thank you. Good question. Good discussion. It would be nice. You know, a lot of people don't have computers, so if they could put put pamphlets out, so people would look at them, that would help too. You know, instead of going on a computer to find out things. Well, I'm sure they could go to a DNR service center to find that information out. I mean, there's only so much they can, you know, they can do with that type of stuff. So, you know, the, the internet's the easiest, but I understand what you're saying too, but that's why they have service centers. And I suggest them to call the service center if they don't have a computer access. Sure. Any other questions? All right, we'll move on to um, number eight. This is a discussion for action items. The Forester's Forest Administrator's Report. And number A is the approval of the draft for the 15-year plan and public comment period. So the fifth, people first, yeah. I didn't know if you wanted to go first or not. So the 15-year plan is the comprehensive forest management plan that basically guides everything that this department does, uh, at least out in the forest, um, ordinances, contracts, you name it. Uh, every 15 years, that plan has to be uh, redrafted by Wisconsin state statute. Uh, it's part of being in the county forest law program with the DNR. It allows us to you know, utilize uh, their services like Avery as our in our forestry liaison in those 900 hours of time that we get and several other additional um, grants that we get annually to help run this program. So we're in the process of redrafting that plan for the next 15 years. Um, as a part of that, there's a series of steps that we need to take um, to ensure that there's adequate amount of public input if, if desired by the public in it. And so we're at that first stage right now where we've put together a draft plan. Um, you got that in your email to the committee or meeting uh, agenda. And basically today we put together a draft. We know it's not perfect. We know that there's gonna be uh, adjustments need to be made, but we need the committee's approval to basically approve that draft so we can publish an ad in the paper or public comment and start that process of working with any people in the public that are interested in providing comment um, you folks, DNR partners, Forest Service partners, whoever might want input into what we've put together so far, um, basically this, this approves us to begin starting that process so then we can take that comment and make those uh, changes if we feel that they're necessary and 
applicable to our program. Um, once we go through the public comment period, we'll have a revised plan and that will come back to you um, for final review and, and approval and then it'll go to the common board. So there's, you know, this isn't the, the first and last time that you're going to see this. Um, this is a draft. This is just a little step in the process that we need to get your stamp of approval to say, yep, we approve this draft, move on to public comment and you know, so on and so forth. I, I just have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt, in the past, has the public read through that? I mean, no. do you get because yeah. no. after going through it, I'm thinking, okay, is the public going to look at a specific page or read 200 pages of? Yeah, you know, so I just started um, last time when we did this process, and I don't think we had any public comment uh, talking with the DNR personnel that assist us in this process and the other counties that are a little bit further ahead than us, um, it sounds like they're getting very little public comment. Um, that doesn't mean that we won't get any, you know, we could get some. Um, I know we've got work to do with our DNR partners. Um, there's some things in this first draft that uh, have been identified that, you know, they'd like to see some adjustments made and things like that, but I don't foresee um, you know, a real long public comment period or real long list of public comments that come in. Okay. Um, there's one thing I'd like the committee to be aware of in this. Here's what this plan looks like. And on page, it's number 205.1. It says County Board Supervisors. And this is the Ashland County Forestry and Recreation Committee. These are nine like bylaws that we would, the committee would go by. And I'm gonna read them to you. And then it's on page four on the bottom of this thing. So it says, prepare an annual work plan and budget to ensure the calendar year must be presented for the board's approval. Two, establish and maintain of the facilities necessary to conduct forest operations. This is what we have to approve. Number three, negotiate an acquisition of land necessary to further objections of the county forest. Four, review and approve all proposed recreation projects for the county forest lands. Five, cooperation with the DNR on all matters pertaining to natural resource management of the county forest. Six, participate in all other activities included in ex ex execution and administration. Number seven, employ personnel or administrator and implement the County Forest Program. Eight, hold community meetings as necessary to carry about the above duties. And the last one, any other duties as required by order of a resolution passed by the uh, County Board of Supervisors. So this is what we have a responsible for. And I wanted to read that into the minutes so that we understand that these are our, this is what we have to do. So at this time, if, does anybody have any questions about the 15 year plan? Just if we make a motion to approve the draft, the public comment period, do we have to approve a time frame or? It's a 30 day, 30, day. 30 day. That's, I believe, a part of the statutory process. Is, I'm told by being on it. What I'd like to do is make a, a, a motion to pass the 15 year forestry plan as the draft as presented. And I'm looking for a second. Oh, I'll second. And Rich, and we need a, a, set, a motion. Is John making the, the motion and I seconded it? No, I made the motion and you seconded it. Okay. Rich. So now we're looking for all those in favor say aye. 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 Passed. And I'll tell you what, these two guys sitting here that's um, conducting our meeting, they did a lot of work to get this ready in time for this meeting. They, they deserve some kind of, I mean, we're giving bonuses for people because of COVID. These two guys should have had something too because they've worked on this all work. We can't, we don't know the work that they went in to get this ready for today. So I want to thank the committee for passing this and Jerome and Matt for working very hard on this. This was not easy to do. Any other questions? No. Next one, number nine, any other business? Oh, no, we've got a couple other. Members. Oh, yeah, there's um, under eight. Under eight. Yeah. Eight B. You got sale extensions. Yeah. 
We have the old agenda. Oh. Yeah, we have the old agenda. Oh, how did you wait? I got it off by email. Um, oh, yeah. We, okay, number B is the timber sale extensions for sales 1022, 1026, 1033, 1040, and 1041. Yeah, it's just this is a housekeeping item. We've got those sales. Um, they haven't been completed yet. Some of them are very close to being done. Um, they were uh, winter sales that they couldn't get finished last year, and we just need extensions on. I would make a motion to approve those extensions. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, we need a second. No second. John seconds it. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All right. All right. <clears throat> All right, just let me write these numbers in here. All right, and then C is the approval of the 2022 20, annual work plan. If somebody could just give us a quick. Yeah, I'll do that. So the committee and the county board, they see this on an annual basis uh, about this time every year. Uh, basically, this is our best estimate at what we're going to be doing the following year. Um, Avery referenced this in his report um, next week. We'll be getting together and discussing um, you know, how we're going to break down the workload of the uh, timber harvest acres that need to be reconned and established on the front. So for instance, in 2022, um, we're going to be doing forest inventory on approximately 2,100 acres. Um, Below that, you see a breakdown by cover type on how those acres are allocated. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to harvest or establish for harvest 2,100 acres. That's what we're going to look at. Um, we know for a fact that some of those acres will be harvested or will be ready for harvest and some of them won't be. Um, but that's what we base you know, our harvest establishment off of. And then on the following pages, um, there's just a list of other activities that we pretty much do on an annual basis uh, to some degree. It's like a guideline for us. Does anybody have any questions for Matt or no. Jerome? This guideline is pretty much the same as uh, last year. Generally speaking, yeah. We don't have any significant projects um, that would have you know, been added to it for this coming year. Uh, that are uh, on the ordinary, uh, generally speaking, it, it stays relatively the same. Is there an, I Gary? make a motion to approve the 24 plans of 2022. Thank you, Gary. We need a second. I'll oh, second I'll, it. Okay. I'll second the motion. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Aye. Thank you, Marty. All right. Now we're going to number nine. Any other business? Nine is well, fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, eight, eight is this is for me, but so we did eight A, B, and C, correct? Yeah, we did those. And now we're going to nine. Oh, the old bit, that's nine. Yeah, yeah. I minus eight is the new one, but well, other business, but um, um I got I got uh I got I got a question question for you again about ATVs. You know the, the, old, the old railroad grade between Mellon and Upson? Mm -hmm. That's a mine company land through most of it. How, how, would you, how would you use that to open it up so you could get to Upson and get to the other, all the other trails that you can? Well, first it's owned by the railroad. And then some of the land around it is private and some is owned by, I think it's RGGS. And there could be the point waiting in there too. So, you know, you have a couple different variables. Um, trails or rails to trails is one of them that the DNR does. Yeah. But I think at one time they looked into that. And I'm not sure that the railroad wanted to give that up. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's another thing you can look on the DNR website too. Um, yeah. Type in rails to trails and it explains the process there. Um, and it's something that clubs know about. Okay. Um, my understanding with the rails to trails program is that the railroad right away maintains that ownership and at any time that they choose to repurpose that right away for railroad use 
they can do that. Right. Um, so when you start looking at snowmobile and ATV programs and funding from them, if you go and put a snowmobile bridge in and you get state funding from that, and that bridge becomes non-functional anymore, like this trail doesn't use it anymore, okay. the state wants their money back for that. So oftentimes, to my understanding, these railroad right-of-ways um, require a lot of financial uh, investment up front to make them suitable for safe ATV or snowmobile traffic. And there's a huge liability that at some point the railroad might say, well, we want to put rail back on there. And then somebody's going to have to reimburse the state for those funds to build a $100,000 bridge or whatever the case might be. So that's generally in the conversations that I've been a part of, seems to be what kind of kills those movements. But that, this railroad we've been sold a couple of times now, hasn't it, in the last few years? So I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. I'm not familiar with it. I just thought I'd ask. Right. Um, well, for instance, I know that was a conversation that had back in 2016 when the grade from, uh, we'll say, Glidden to Ashland, you know, got washed out and basically the yeah. railroad abandoned it. That's why it's sitting there like it is today. Nobody wants to put the money into it. It would make a great rec trail. Yes, but that that liability of what if you do all that work and then the railroad wants to repurpose it ten years from now? You know who's gonna? But here they that? even took the rails out. So I was just wondering if it was yeah. actually abandoned so they could use it. But okay, then uh, something else I got. You know we always use this building here for our meetings, mm -hmm. which is a lot better than yes. over there. Do, do they charge us anything for use this? No. Well, I, I I think it would be suitable to give them some kind of donation, like a hundred dollar donation to their building every year. You can certainly ask the free. Yeah. Okay. Because they would have to come out of someone's budget. Yeah, yeah. I'm just My saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They have to heat the building and Make you know, coffee. They make coffee for us or anything else. I mean, they should have some kind of. I blew their sidewalks for them this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, when we have a board meeting, we have a board meeting coming up the last time. Sarah, could we put that on the agenda for the next meeting that we're uh, discussion about $100 annual fee for forestry and rec using this building for sure. sure. Oh, this is um, Chris Osman. I just. He's not very good either, is he? He's doing better. He's doing better now. So he will be back in the game here sooner or later, you know? I would guess, yeah. Okay. Because I was just wondering, I've been hearing some horrible stories about him not uh, doing that good, and I'm just looking at the future for here. Sure. And so, are you taking care of all those business work now, though? Yep. Okay, well, thank you for doing that. And, um, Taking care of your business and his both. So. Well, it's not just me. I mean, between myself, Jerome, Sarah, and <laughs> Avery, you know, we, we separated the workload between all of us. So all three. Mm -hmm. it's, a, okay. it's a true team effort around here. Great. Well, you're doing a good job. So, yeah, thank you. All right. The next item is the expense vouchers, and uh, you guys have signed it. So, we need a motion to approve the expense vouchers. I'll make a motion that we approve the vouchers. Rich makes the motion. I'll second it. John seconds the motion. Two separate question. Okay. But it is the second landing the electrical service, is that for a light? Uh, Do they have a parking light up there? Uh, like an well, all there are light light. the lights that will uh, oh, yeah. parking lot is lit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we've got the well house for the boat wash. Okay. The okay. okay. Thank you. So we have a motion by Rich, a second by John, and we need a motion for um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And you know what? Just what Gary just did. He has a question that he needs clarified, and he asks it at the meeting where everybody can, who's able can answer his question, and that's what this committee is for. If you have a question or you need something understood more clearly, that's what this committee is for. So to John and Rich and Gary, thank you for asking great questions today. All righty. And then the next meeting will be February 2nd at 9 o'clock, or it possibly could go into March. 
I think it's probably going to be in February. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So for that one. Then, Would it be all right if we did it later in the month instead of the first? If we have it yes. Under this situation that you guys yeah. are in, trying I'm to just looking at how that 30 day comment period is going to fall out, you know, right now. It's, it's going to be a couple days before, you know, it gets in the paper. And you know, we have to go from when it. Are we still on? Yes. Well, we'll Okay. And Bruce, I'm hoping that um, we have a very good year with no fatalities. Um, yes. I appreciate your job you're doing. I'm, I'm just, it's a, a mind bothering thing on your end, too, to keep everything running smooth. And we just don't want no fatalities again. We know it's a bad thing for everybody. So thank you again. Mm -hmm. All right, does anybody else have any questions? All right, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Which makes the motion? I'll second it. Gary will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn the meeting is approved. Thank you.